Well, joining us now is Dr. Arvind Panagaria, a man uh, who has written several books, and his latest one, interestingly, is on free trade and prosperity. Um, Mr. Panagaria, always a pleasure. So thanks very much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. As I said, an interesting time Thank for you. you to be writing about uh, the need for free trade and its impact on poverty alleviation. Uh, do you believe that uh, people are still willing to buy the free trade argument, though, sir? Well, you know, we have, uh, the free trade economists have carried on their fight uh, for it uh, for over 200 years, uh, and I'm sure this fight will continue. Uh, so this is really, you know, uh, yet another uh, uh, milestone uh, on the way to uh, getting the message uh, across and uh, persuading uh, people to uh, 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 the benefits of free trade. And certainly we have made a lot of progress. Huh? Mm. So it's not as though uh, we have not made progress. Uh, I, I just sort of jokingly say that 200 years we have been uh, fighting this battle. But uh, uh, if we look at today, uh, mm. you know, uh, uh, in the last 70 years after the second end of the Second World War, enormous progress actually in opening yes. up the markets uh, the world is much freer uh, in terms of trade today absolutely so, yes. uh, there has been a lot of progress uh, that's been on. made uh, on account of free trade but uh, you know uh, given what you observe today sir and the many flashpoints that you see specifically of course what's happening between the us and china what would be the red flags that you would be most concerned about uh, that could have the potential to turn the clock back on free trade Right. No, I think uh, from that perspective, the current uh, uh, trade war between the United States and China is a bit uh, uh, worrisome uh, because uh, uh, many of the actions that have taken that have been taken, both by the United States and China, and actually on the side, the European Union, uh, Mexico, Canada, also. Uh, are inconsistent with the WTO rules. Uh, so each of these entities has been in violation of the WTO rules. Uh, and uh, from that perspective, you know, uh, uh, unless uh, order gets restored, mm. uh, multilateral trading system does face very serious challenge. Uh, I think it's really the biggest challenge uh, the multilateral trading system uh, has faced in the last 70 years. Mm. Do you believe that uh, the multilateral organizations that you spoke of, the WTO, you said that they're probably uh, facing an existential crisis today. Uh, do you believe that we are now entering an era where we are going to see many more bilateral engagements? Uh, and what about the future, for instance, of new trade formations, the RCEP, uh, for example? And do you fear for the relevance as well as the existence of the WTO today? Well, I, I, as I said, uh, there is uh, uh, indeed some bit of existential threat uh, to the WTO. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, the rules that had governed uh, the trading system for the last 70 years uh, have uh, been now violated. Uh, and, and European Union, China and the United States, the three largest trading entities, stand in violation of them. Uh, so, so uh, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, what is not clear is, you know, what is going to be the end game, mm. particularly of the United States-China war. Uh, it's, it's clear that the United States wants to sort of change the rules. It wants to change the current uh, status quo entry. Uh, uh, China, on the other hand, also is a sort of aggressive and belligerent power. Mm. Uh, it is certainly not uh, uh, playing to the U.S. tune. So, uh, uh, you know, we, for a while, I think we are in, in, in going to be in this situation where uh, uh, we, we would see some weakening of the WTO. Uh, one hopes that, you know, in the, in the longer run, uh, once uh, countries begin to see that free trade actually is the solution or the problem, you know, I mean, once you begin to see the damage that uh, these protectionist actions are going to do, hmm. uh, uh, maybe this will uh, make the countries rethink that, that uh, free trade is the solution, not the problem. Right. Uh, as regards your other question on RCEP, uh, uh, I think, you know, by and large, uh, uh, if, if uh, at least for uh, the shorter period of time, mm. you know, short to medium run, uh, it seems that uh, the, the bilateral agreements, uh, 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 which is our, our plurilateral agreements, right. which is what RCEP is, mm. uh, would be the only game left in town. Mm. I mean, that, you know, that will be the only one left. Uh, uh, and so from India's perspective, certainly I think, you know, uh, uh, that is an avenue uh, which can still be uh, explored and used uh, to liberalize trade. 
You know, since you spoke of India, sir, let me ask you about what you're observing uh, here. Uh, you have several times spoken about the uh, concerns that you have with respect to adopting an import substitution strategy. Do you believe that uh, in a lot of ways we've actually turned the clock back and we're now headed right back in that direction in light of the developments and the policy moves that we've seen over the last few months? Well, I suppose the direction has gone back a bit uh, because, you know, it was a very hard-fought uh, reform on trade that we had done. It took us almost like uh, 16, 17 years to get where we got. Uh, so some reversal has happened. Uh, I won't say that clock has been fully turned back mm. because uh, I think by and large we are still uh, a, a, a liberal trading country. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, the fear really is that if we continue on that road, then I think, you know, uh, we, we uh, may see uh, a, a, a lot of the gains we made in terms of productivity, competitiveness, uh, uh, economies of scale, uh, exploitation. Uh, all those gains uh, uh, do come into a bit of risk. Uh, you know, this is, uh, it reminds me of, uh, and, and as a part of this book, uh, uh, Free Trade and Prosperity, I look at Korea and it really reminds me of uh, uh, early, you know, 1970s of mm. Korea. Mm that uh, it, it opened up uh, in, uh, in early, early 1960s, uh, its trade expanded quite considerably, uh, and then it turned a bit to import substitution, which, it, which did actually hurt its growth rates. You mm. know, they went, came down from something close to 9% to about 7%. Mm. So they lost about a couple of percentage points of growth there. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, so uh, at least that one, one experience where we know that after opening up for about a decade, a country went back on it, uh, it, did not, it did not produce good results. Mm. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, so, so there is a bit, you know, but on the other hand, I don't want to overplay it sure. because we, on the whole, still remain uh, a, 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 a fairly open country. Mm. Uh, yes, you pointed out that there has been some reversal, uh, though, uh, and, and some change in direction. But if I could also ask you about the other concern uh, that you continue to have, and that is with respect to uh, the Indian export story. You've always been a firm believer uh, that India needs to take more of the export market, more of global trade. Uh, do you believe that uh, somewhere, even there, uh, there has been uh, perhaps not a change in direction, but not enough momentum built in uh, to try and push the export story? So I, I, I think uh, uh, right now I feel uh, a little more optimistic because, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, was impacting us a bit adversely was the, the appreciation of the rupee. And in real, term, in real terms, you know, rupee had uh, appreciated uh, um, practically more than 10% uh, over uh, the last few years. Uh, and uh, that, of course, means that the exports become less profitable. Uh, 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 the recent devaluation, depreciation of the rupee that has happened, uh, which now you know is about at 72, 73 rupees to the dollar, I think that ought to make the exports far more lucrative, far more profitable. Uh, so we should see. I think you know this uh, always the, the impact always happens with some lag. Uh, so we might not see it immediately, but uh, the, at least the change in the exchange rate. Uh, is, is is on the whole very good news actually from the viewpoint of the exporters. Uh, we could do more, of course, you know, in terms of removing the uh, obstacles to the exporters. Uh, there are too many uh, in terms of the trade facilitation. Uh, I think you know we require too many uh, clearances from too many ministries for uh, every product that has that is exported. Mm. Uh, I think you know we could improve that. We could also uh, uh, make our ports work better. Uh, uh, compared to uh, countries like Singapore, Hong Kong, yeah. uh, where uh, ships can turn around in seven or eight hours. Uh, we, our ships take two to three days to mm. turn around. So that improvement could be made. And of course, the long, longer term, uh, if, uh, in the longer term, we also need the infrastructure to uh, get better. Uh, you know, one of the ideas that you pushed very vigorously while you were in government, sir, was the idea of the special coastal zones. Uh, that hasn't uh, taken off, but what we are given to understand is that our, as part of the new industrial policy that the government is in the process of formulating, uh, they could put forward the idea of special employment zones, and these could be linked in some form or fashion uh, to exports. Uh, no complete clarity yet. But uh, what do you make of the transformation of the idea that, that you had put forward, if at all it does? go through 
Well, I'll be really delighted, Shireen, you know. And, and by the way, you know, the way I had uh, uh, always advocated was I didn't mean these to be necessarily export zones. Uh, I, I, in fact, actually called them uh, the, the coastal employment zones. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't think we need to make a distinction or, or require, you know, the investors to uh, uh, export necessarily. Uh, as long as, you know, they make the investment which generates employment, uh, 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 based on that, I think we ought to uh, go after these zones. Uh, so I'm uh, absolutely delighted. I also heard, you know, the Prime Minister uh, in, in Japan today was speaking and he uh, happened to mention this Sagarmala project, yes. uh, of which I suppose, you know, the coastal zones are uh, going to be probably a part. So I'm, I'm sort of uh, quite pleased, <laughs> I must say, that uh, uh, some progress has happened uh, of, of the idea that I had mooted while at the Niti Aayog. Uh, so, you know, uh, Dr. Panagaria, in the light of the global context and what we are seeing happen with uh, uh, more protectionism, with perhaps the larger economies uh, looking more insular today, and given where India finds itself, in order of priority, what would the prescription be uh, to not just uh, aid domestic growth, but also to take more share of global growth? Well, I think we do have to go after the, uh, uh, taking a larger share in the uh, uh, global markets. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the uh, merchandise exports alone uh, are about 17 to 18 trillion dollars worth. Uh, our share in it is uh, uh, less than 2 percent, something like 1.6 percent. Uh, we got to get, get, get a larger share. And from India's point of view, you know, while we already spoke about, you know, how the multilateral trading system is under stress, but from the in, from India's own perspective, actually, uh, the what is going on between U.S. and China really mm. in, uh, offers us an opportunity, right? Uh, because uh, uh, products that uh, now face much higher tariffs in the United States, uh, we could certainly fill part of that gap in the United States. Likewise, there are products that uh, face high tariffs in China against the United States mm. and so that also opens up opportunities in China. So two very large markets, uh, the United States and China, uh, if we have our own house in order and uh, the incentives uh, for exports are in the right place, uh, this is a fantastic opportunity for us. Right, uh, fantastic opportunity for India if we were to uh, make use of the ongoing tension between U.S. and India. Uh, Mr. Pangaria, always a pleasure, sir. Thanks very much for joining us on CNBC TV 18 and appreciate your time. My pleasure.